So our next speaker is Charlotte Young. Charlotte's a longtime trustee of Gatekeeper, and I'm sure will be known to many of you here today. In her working world, she works as a coach using expressive arts, much of which is integrated with the natural world. And she's talking today about pilgrimage. She has a lot to say, and it may be that I have to exercise a bit of um, uh, a five minute bell device um, just so that we can try and keep to some sort of time scale. So with that, I'll hand over to Charlotte. Thank you, Mike. Yes, I do need a bell. <laughs> and um, I'd like to um, introduce um, my experiences of being in memory theatres, which is what zodiacs are really, memory theatres. And we wander through them like nomads. And we use the arts, singing and dancing, taking photographs. Those were lovely photographs, Mike, of Orkney. And they carry with them, these uh, slideshows carry with them the vibrations of us as nomadic pilgrims drifting through the landscape. And my experiences start in Africa. In fact, I was brought up in Africa and it was a very nomadic life. I came back to England and I was looking for the wild. So there was uh, the New Forest, the Savanac Forest, and the Moors. And my granddad uh, lived on the edge of Dartmoor. So that was one place where we have a fascinating group. I'll tell you more about it. And Winchester and Wiltshire. And so my home landscapes have been most inspiring to me. My families drifted through and shared their delight. In Winchester, there was St. Catherine's Hill, where we walked the dogs. There's so much history, I can't tell you all of it, but um, I hope to do so later. So, can I have the next slide, please? Um, what I've been developing is a Wheel of Life scheme. And this one is Peter Dawkins' ideas of the Knights of the Round Table being very helpful and creative roles. So in Taurus, we have the builder role. And in Gemini, we have an innovator role, being very good with imagination. And so on, round the wheel of life, which is also the wheel of the seasons. Now I'm going to talk about the Milky Way, which comes at the cusp of Taurus and Gemini and goes to Sagittarius and Scorpio cusp. And this is in real terms how you see the constellations of our Milky Way in the sky, which cross over the sun's ecliptic. So therein holds a great tale. This Milky Way was researched by Anthony Thorley and Peter, and they're both very, very experienced researchers. And so when I began life with the Gatekeeper Trust, I was wondering what it all meant. At the end of my talk, I'll summarize some interesting things about where Gatekeeper has started from in the middle of a zodiac and its Milky Way. However, here's my um, invitation to you to be actively in the zodiac, looking at how your talents can be unfolded with each of those signs. So we start with the builder Taurus, but before that is Aries. And Aries is about passion of purpose. We must get our passion of purpose in focus, and it's about focus of the mind. Before we can build our dream team or soul friends, 
So the first thing we do in tours is build a dream team and we go on to be innovative with that support. And then for the rest of this wheel of life, we carry on to Scorpio and Sagittarius where we reflect on our experiences and develop a new seed vision. So this is about carrying our seed vision into the landscape and working on it in the landscape. So I think the, the whole round table is about the challenges as well. There's the spear, the sword, the jewel of crystal and the shield. In cancer, we develop our guardianship skills and so on. We must guard our vision. And we develop good boundaries. Now, in the zodiac of Britain, we have Taurus, where a sculpture developed the dream. And it was a dream of miners. And it is so synchronous that we have this dream of miners and it being represented by a beautiful work of art of his daughter, the artist's daughter, in a dream world with her eyes closed. And this is where we, we start and develop the arrows of desire, which manifest as a new seed vision when we complete in Sagittarius. So that's my my bid for an astrological interpretation is a vision quest. Can I have the other, the next slide, please? So this is Jill Smith's gypsy switch has been interpreted on the left there. She found this really very rough draft sketch and was so inspired by it she put her young daughter on her back and traveled round. That is so inspiring. She traveled round. She was an actor and an artist and has ended up in the Hebrides at this very moment. And her work has inspired many people to discover landscapes around Britain. Can I have the next slide? Anthony is a great friend of mine. And one of the first things we did is go up to Northumbria and hear about his work, discovering the Northumbria Lung Zodiac. He spent four years walking around and he found coincidences of place names and the shapes on the map. And he discovered where the 13th signs were, there's two 13th signs. You have the 12 signs and the 13th signs come at the cusps at either end of the Milky Way. It's exciting, it all unfolds. And at these places, he found hermit trails and rivers coinciding to make circular traveling paths. And he called them silver wheels. And that inspired me. Can I find some in other places in the landscape? So I'm going to show you what I've done in the landscape after this. But he was a great inspirer of mine. Here's the next slide. The Wessex Temple. And Anthony was so devoted to the wheel that exists. And you see at the top, the largest circle, which he calls a third eye. And there's a line of places coming up from the left hand up to the third eye. And these are the places where King Alfred traveled on his way to beat King Guthrum, who's hovering around somewhere near Chippen Chippenham, I think. And King Alfred visited the sacred sites. Borough Mump is one of them. And they all had a nice coincidence of the Michael and Mary line. 
So he met Guthrum at Eddington, having gathered the men of Cornwall and having gathered the hermits and his bishops to advise him on his kingly power because he's not crowned at that time. He beat Guthrum and converted him to Christianity and he went to Bath, became crowned and followed a Roman road to Winchester. And the Roman road goes through Silver Down, just on the right hand edge of the largest wheel there. He still followed the ancient tracks of the sacred sites and the mythologies. As he became king and then ruled in Winchester. Winchester's my hometown. So I'll mention now that the places I'm showing you connect to my family. It is very interesting. Um, in my childhood, I remember going to Marlborough, which is at the top right hand this, of this largest circle. Marlborough College is where my brother was, was educated. And in Marlborough's land and, and, and property is Merlin's Mound. It is almost reflecting Silbury Hill's Mound in size. So Merlin, what was he doing in this huge great circle, which is by the way, 20 miles in diameter, and I might get my figures wrong, and the equidistant cities are Marlborough, Devizes, and um, larger show, nothing much in between, except Scales Bridge. So Scales Bridge interested me in the 80s. And I asked certain people to help me find out what this whole circle was about. And Anthony said, I'll do the research. And so we had a small research group and we traveled around weighing up what was in this big circle. And by the way, Devizes has a little village going around in a precise track around the circle called Roundway Village. That's what interested me, Roundway and Scales Bridge in the middle. I have since learned that there are black dogs outside the zodiacs and the black dog symbolizes Anubis and St. Christopher, who is depicted with a dog's head and carried the Christ across the river Styx. And these symbols are of us coming through the landscape, theatres of memory, memory of our lives, memory of the difficulties of our lives, of transformation. And St. Christopher carries a Christ child. So it really depicts ourselves as pilgrimages in a wondrous memory theater, holding the light within us and holding our heart light and then talking to the landscape. So if anybody thinks they're gonna find a zodiac in their home landscape, you better think of St. Christopher because where they govern the church, these saints have great importance to where the stars of the galaxy are represented as a river of stars. Now I'm going to branch out because I'm in Capricorn. And where do you think Gatekeeper ended up having conferences, but in Pusey? And it's my view and Anthony's that the Pusey Valley, where we have all the crop circles, is actually the path of the Milky Way for this particular zodiac. It's the Capricorn zodiac. So let's have the next slide before I go way over the edge. The Milky Way stretches across to Silverdown. And this is a work in progress, which what I've done is I've gathered a, um, a 12 
point diagram and put it over and looked at the signs of the zodiac to see what comes in each sign. Now, I don't know whether this is accurate, but is Stonehenge on the cusp of Aquarius and Capricorn? And Stonehenge is, is a wonderful site which is a timetable going right back into thousands of years. So do you think Capricorn, rule by Saturn, is about this great timetable? I think so. This is one of my ruminations. Let's have my next slide. Now in this Pusey Valley, Angela Shaw, our chairman, is an artist and has taken pictures of white horses and white has been found in hill names. There's a white horse in the Dartmoor Zodiac. So white reflects the milk in the Milky Way and the importance of the whole of Pusey Valley. And what do you find in the Pusey Valley but Milk Hill? There has to be a strange synchronicity that we we led up many many conferences at, in Pusey in the Pusey Valley with little pilgrimages to the river to honor the river sources in the north of this zodiac arises a place called Alton Bounds where there are five sources of the river Avon and this is all part of this wonderful Milky Way part of the Capricorn Zodiac. It's the start of great things. Let's have the next slide. And Angela had this wonderful sense of making artwork, which I love doing too with my photos. And here are the horses. They look as though they're swimming through pattern and I I guess it's a pattern in the landscape but these horses are phenomenal because they represent the pilgrimage they represent the traveling you know they re represent us as the horses who are in our bodies helping our body horse to manage it through all the vicissitudes of life. In the Pusey Valley, by the way, Anthony found pre-Reformation churches. Each of them sat on one of the constellations of the Milky Way. He said, without exception. So is this coincidence or is this deliberate? So if you throw yourself back, pre-Reformation means the Norman conquest. So William the Conqueror comes over with his mystic clerics, and, and Anthony told us, the mystic clerics decided to advise the king who is now taking over the British landscape, where the best place was to have churches and they coincided with the Milky Way. So if Norman the Conqueror wanted power in the land, he was in the right place. And so was King Alfred. Lovely stories, aren't they? Let's have the next slide. So where did our lovely Gatekeeper Trust begin? And where was the first pilgrimage? Well, it all centered on London and the Kingston Zodiac, we met Mary Kane. And since that time, Maggie Fielder and Mary Kane and Richard Douglas all spent wonderful hours with Mary in the Kingston Zodiac. The first pilgrimage we had was to St Anne's Well. And St Anne is really Anna. Black Anna or Black Anubis, the guardian dog. So we started in the right place. We had a procession 
And we practiced having processions with uh, somebody enacting Saint Anne and giving birth to Mary on the path to the well. It was very hilarious. So we floated our little candles on the well and we sent our devotions to St. Anne. Thereafter, the gatekeeper began to flourish. And maybe, just maybe, there's an invisible power in the land which kept gatekeeper growing, running many conferences in Hammersmith, which is, by the way, Sagittarius. And basically using the, the wonderful founder members of Mary and Keith Fielder and Richard Douglas, where were they living? Hammersmith and Wimbledon. And these were part of the Milky Way of the Kingston Zodiac. Now I've only just realized this because I've put my mind to it. I think it is incredible. We've been working for, for years and years. And here you have in the bottom left, Mary Kane Zodiac. Well, I think that there's a lot of magic in the land and we better respect it. We'll give all our love and devotion and then see what unfolds. Because Gatekeeper was a wonderful thing to unfold. Okay, next slide. Our first pilgrimage, this is in the 80s, was to cathe the cathedral. And here's a cathedral in the dark later on. Um, and um, at dusk, there's a wonderful atmosphere. And I noticed this tree has a heart shape in it. So I took the photograph. And for me, it conjures up all sorts of wonderful times in Winchester. We had a small group. We met at the cathedral and we walked to different parts of the city, bringing our awareness to the city. And that to me spells a modern pilgrim, a modern mystic, a modern lover of the land underneath the city. And that was before the encircling the land with sacred dance was run by Susie Straw, one of which the cathedrals of, of the land, one of which um, I think still has a circle dance teacher there, but not in the cathedral, in the St. Lawrence Church, next door to the cathedral close, on top of William's Palace. How about that for transforming the past? Okay, next slide. And recently I have been looking at St. Catherine's Wheel very, very closely. And I noticed that there are chapels, east and west. St. Cross in the west, Chilcom in the east. St. Giles Hill at the top in the north. And lo and behold, Twyford Church in the south has a stone circle still there under the tower. Later on, we found out about the punch bowl in the north east. And the punch bowl is really a round table, as Peter Dawkins said to us when he came over to investigate. It's a round table that has been squared off with four corners. And Jonathan, who is one of our group members, our pilgrim, invited Peter down. He said, this is a very important place because nearby is Temple Valley. So Temple Valley is about land belonging to the Templars and Templars knew about the sacred sites underneath. So Jonathan went on to organize music festivals in this actual amphitheater. 
The farmer was very pleased because he couldn't grow much in it. And besides, they were the first crop circles emerged there when I was still living in Winchester. They were simple circles and they were arranged in ones and twos and threes and fours. It was so exciting. And it was only later I discovered it was a pagan site. Okay, next one. So at the end of the Temple Valley, we have a view of St. Catherine's Hill, who's at the centre of our circle, and Telegraph Hill. Now in Temple Valley, that, that is the beginning of St. Swithin's Way that goes all the way up to the North Downs. And Telegraph Hill is the beginning of the South Downs. And in the middle, there is this amphitheatre and it's full of musicians and actors to this very day in the summer. I found that quite extraordinary. I was very intrigued by the way I was brought up going to school Paul St. Swithin's. And St. St. Swithin's was on the Magdalene Hill, which leads up to that, if you see that right picture there, there is a white canopy. That's an observatory. You can go and pay your money and then look at the stars. Now, is that a coincidence? I don't think so. There's something more to discover about Winchester. Anyway, so the next slide, please. And when we were there, look at Telegraph Hill, the chalk hills and downs, there was a lantern and somebody had come up from somewhere and it was dedicated to their child who had cancer. And I thought that was very, very moving because I didn't know who it was, but it was obviously being used by somebody local to send blessings to his child. And that's the way modern pilgrims work now. This is one. And maybe if you walk around your downs and in your landscape, you might find little bouquets and little honorings that are going on because a great enlightenment is beginning. I'd invite you to look very closely at your, your landscapes. So this was where I was brought up. Next slide. Five, five minutes, Charlotte, please. Five minutes, okay. Please, yeah. That, that's one of our pilgrimages. Next slide. So encircling the land with sacred dance, art rescues the heart. Susie Straw is in Ely in this one. What a wonderful visioning this was. Next slide. And here's St. Lawrence with a wonderful lantern at St. Winchester Cathedral. Next slide. And I started doing art. I, I got hold of um, Peter's zodiac and put it against the, the uh, Pearly Chase mature garden as a background because it reminded me of a forest woodland sanctuary. And each of those pictures come from the local groups who in 2017 ran their pilgrimages. I went around um, inspiring and collecting them all up. <laughs> I made little prayer cards, those are the prayer cards. And as a, a visioning tool, you might find that you can tune into the, uh, the amazing the mystical pull that the star mats have for us. Next slide. Dartmoor. This is a rough map of the Dartmoor zodiac. Correspondence is there with the names. Next slide. Anthony came and gave us a talk and he gave us this map. The Milky Way has White Horse Hill and White Hills. And he goes 
up from south to north and it ends up where would you think in between Taurus and Gemini so that settles that then next one <laughs> and on Dartmoor there we have our circle dance next one and there we have our poets improvising with a landscape song now I have about 12 poetry uh, songs which groups have made and the transcriptions are available if you'd like next slide here we have the end it's a game of life we're in and here is the graphic of the different stages of developing the heart desire of your spiritual self. Take your heart's desire into the landscape. Ask the questions of the different signs. Where and who am I going to build with? Gemini. What can I innovate with in the landscape, in my life? Take the plunge and really go for your vision because underneath the land, there's a wonderful, mysterious spirit. And it's a collection of the stories and myths and the hermits we've been jogging around in the way they do, imitating the life of Christ being reborn again. So any problems you have, you can take to the landscape. The problems, as you can see from Peter's uh, Knights of the Round Table, are really challenges. The shield, can you really develop as a good guardian? The spear, bring me my spear of my heart's desire. The sword, the sword of truth. Let's find the truth of this matter. And the crystal. The crystal is the pure vision that we start the whole cycle with. We have a seed vision. It is like crystal to our imagination. And we breathe on it our heart's desire. We allow it to develop into a seed, into a plant, into a flower. The flower is in the south. We trim the flowers, petals, and we present our vision trimmed up and looking all nice and dandy and saucy. And then in Libra, we have to organize it for other people, mediate with our vision and listen. So it's about listening. We listen to people and their visions and we put love into action. Before we go on to Scorpio, Sagittarius, reflection, and we gather up the seeds again in the autumn, ready for a new cycle. So that's how you live your life in the landscape. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, Charlotte. It's uh, your reference to Art in the Landscape brought back a good memory where we you came up to visit with us in the Macclesfield Forest and we did some poetry as we walked to the Bullstone. Yeah, you represent your vision as your art. Route. Yeah, yeah. Never, I'd never thought of myself as a poet up to that point. You could do anything. Absolutely, yeah.